I'm going to go for a tour of the uh, Mura, showing a few of the things, a few of the built things. Uh, as we discuss stuff, I'm uh, going to insert some uh, still pictures from when the car was being built to illustrate whatever I'm talking about. This car is built on a Puro chassis in the front. Uh, front uh, cross member and wheels have been pushed out five inches further forward and uh, it's got an LS3 uh, brand new Chevy Crate LS3 in it with uh, fuel injection of course electronic throttle body a six speed transmission and uh, the uh, cold air intake several other things nice running engine thing will run 0 to 120 just faster than stink Take a little tour of the uh, Mura. This is uh, pretty much the last time we're going to see it around here. Door releases are electronic. You have a uh, key there, and that actually, when you turn the key, it shuts off the. the uh, electricity to the switch that opens the door. Uh, you can open the door from the outside, key on whether the key's locked or not locked by using the number one and number uh, two buttons on the key fob. Or if you don't want to release it with a key fob, you just push the button like a normal car. You're going to look around inside. Looking around inside, the uh, the dash is all white. Uh, we have a black felt cover that we made to set over the top of it. It's nothing fancy, but without the cover on it and direct sunlight, you get glare off the top of the dashboard and the windshield. Uh, the uh, defroster vents are what's holding the black uh, felt in there. The defroster vents can just pop out and take the felt off and you got your white dashboard again. And instrumentation. We have uh, water temperature, oil temp, uh, oil pressure, a clock, uh, voltmeter, fuel, and then uh, the uh, speedo and the tachometer. And then there's a light right in between the two of them there. That's a uh, turn signal indicator uh, light. On the overhead console, looking up, have uh, six switches, uh, just like the original car. Four of them are active, the other two are for later on if somebody adds accessories. And you can see we've done the headliner, made headliner panels for it. All this stuff in here is pretty much custom made. The uh, A-pillar covers. Uh, the glove box, the whole dash is almost totally custom made. We had a couple of pieces that came from England to, to start building a dash with, but there was a lot of fabrication over and above that. And the A-pillars, like I said, are custom made. The overhead console, which we'll look at in a few minutes, is custom made. The upper and lower B-pillar covers on the inside, kind of hard to see from here, but those are custom made. The seats are, uh, are uh, plastic buckets with uh, upholstery on them, done by the upholstery shop down in San Antonio. The uh, kick panel here on the left and right hand sides, down you know on the right, uh, that's custom made. Uh, we made all the door panel, the door, uh, the armrest, uh, and all the all, all the work on the doors. We didn't upholster them here, but everything else was, was hand-built. And then the door releases on the inside, just a regular, uh, uh, what you call it there, lever.
Here you can see the overhead console. Again, that was custom made. The center glove box uh, top there is uh, from a Volkswagen. I can't remember what model, it doesn't matter. We, uh, we custom made a, a, a center console around that piece. Headrests uh, were actually bought on eBay. I don't know what they're from, but we reshaped them and remounted them, figured out a way of mounting them so that they would look uh, as close to the original as possible. The white tube uh, all the way across the back, just under the headrest, is uh, custom fabricated, as is with everything else in this interior. The Furo chassis on this car is, uh, of course, a Furo chassis, but it's uh, been cut down heavily modified uh, with a tube chassis set down over it that we custom made for it. The front wheels, front wheel center line, the front cross member have been moved out five inches further, so the wheelbase has been stretched five inches in the front. This is the front compartment. It uh, got that uh, spare tire air refill thing, and there's a battery tray underneath there, the fiberglass cover. Uh, your uh, brake master cylinder and your hydraulic master cylinder is actually under this cover. This cover is an air box leading into the heating air conditioning system with a vent right through the side here. And there's a two uh, seven millimeter screws that hold it on that can come off. And then underneath, right in this area, is the clutch master cylinder. It's got a three core uh, aluminum radiator. Got coil over suspension with tubular A arms and the big brakes on it. The fiberglass body came from England. Uh, parallel designs, I understand. And uh, it was really lousy fiberglass, just lousy. The uh, car had memory, if you will, when uh, while the car was sitting around while we were in the process of building it and building the chassis and stuff, uh, the body was moving around. The, the fiberglass quality was from the 60s, what used to be made in the 60s in the U.S. And like this, uh, I call this a sideburn, this area here. And the sideburns in front and rear clip both moved in, you know, the the memory in the fiberglass had this thing moved in about six eight inches and uh, the body didn't come with any instructions or any 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 clue how to put it together we had to kind of do it from pictures and and planning and thinking but the only way we could get the body to stay in place was to wedge it out to where it should be and then uh, we welded in tubular framework so steel steel framework all these ribs that you see here that's all steel that's fiberglass right into the underside of the fiberglass body that holds the body in place. You can see over in here, see the, see the uh, raised areas? And then it goes down all the way around. You can see it way down in the underside of the scoops, down towards the nose there. And it goes all the way around the grill opening. And then we also fabricated these inner wheel well liners. These are made out of fiberglass, pretty thick. 
and uh, we fiberglass those right directly into the front clip and that stiffened the front clip up a lot and it's got it to where it doesn't move around now you know it doesn't have memory it may have memory but uh, the steel is keeping it from going back to where to, to, to losing its shape when you say uh, fiberglass has memory uh, in what what you're really talking about is that if it heats and cools and as it's exposed to different weather conditions and different storage conditions it'll move around it'll go any place it wants to go same thing in the rear clip we did the same thing there's a steel rib starting right down in here there's a steel rib that goes all the way up here and then we incorporate the latch mechanism into it and it goes all the way around the back opening area back window area if you will and then all the way down to the rear grill down in there there's a tubes above and below the grill opening there and it's all hand hand fitted and and bent to uh, match the contour of what the body should be you know the when without that rib in there these uh, sideburns on the rear clip had moved in a foot in a couple of months they had moved in a foot I'm going to be inserting some pictures I have been inserting some pictures in this video that show you some of the pictures we took during during the build of this car it took over 4,000 pictures taking the building this car and then once again we built some inner wheel well liners for the car out of fiberglass none came with the kit or anything it wasn't really a kit it was just some parts and uh, those pieces were uh, fiberglass in to help strengthen that rear clip not like it was really needed but got ducked at some place make it look right like it's functional Okay, on the engine we're using a, uh, a, CS, a CSR uh, water pump. It's an electric remote water pump. It's mounted right in here. Uh, there's a gooseneck here with a thermostat in it. The water temperature sensor is on the underside of that gooseneck sticking up into, the, into that, uh, I call that thermostat housing block. Like I said, it's an LS3 uh, Corvette engine. It's got electronic throttle body and 4 inch uh, cold air intake got two and a half inch exhaust with dual uh, spun cats and dual uh, uh, turbo mufflers this uh, G this uh, LS3 uh, LS3 engine uh, we're using the GM wiring harness system you can buy for it and the fuse center is right here here's your six-speed transmission and the linkage and stuff we make a kit to make that work in a Furo see your air conditioning lines down here connected your shift cables right up here right going through right here got all Russell braided fuel lines on it The headlights in this car are Fiat 850 Spider headlights, uh, similar to ones that were used in the real Mira. Uh, they uh, pop up, if you will. We dressed them up a little bit, put a metal cover over this area here so it wasn't so ugly. grill is 
is uh, we made this on our mill and uh, it was kind of fun to make. And they're all, uh, these are metal, uh, 1 8 inch thick uh, metal uh, aluminum uh, flat stock and then uh, set them up on the mill and I cut the radius in them and each one of them is a different length. I think there's like 27 on each side and uh, it's held together by a long long threaded rod and uh, aluminum spacers in between each one. The tail lights are not real uh, Mira parts, they're uh, uh, Fiat parts and they're uh, not exactly match but the real lights cost a fortune and these probably only cost about thirty dollars each or so if you uh, ever want to know why uh, the only the only authentic Mira part that are on here is the uh, the door latch the door uh, locks and they're actually we have that door lock hooked up to an electronic switch that turns the power on and off for opening the doors. Uh, and then of course on the original car, it's all mechanical it's behind there. But the, uh, the uh, authentic uh, Euro parts, okay, just look for them on eBay. You'll find out they're really expensive. I know one of these hood grills was, uh, was one on the eBay, just one, not the here. Just one. It was like seven hundred dollars for just just one of them. You may have noticed that uh, when we were looking inside the rear clip, you saw the uh, the uh, trunk area or the. the box for the trunk. We made that all out of steel uh, sheet and uh, this is what it looks like from this end. It's actually a pretty nice little trunk and we made it for it. Here on the underside of the deck lid you can see more ribs, more ribs that were uh, glassed in because the, uh, to keep the shape, to get the deck lid to stay in one shape. The hinges we used are from the XKE, uh, that rear hatch on the XKE Jag, and uh, we modified to make them fit. And the prop rod is uh, homegrown, if you will. You just lift the lid up, the prop rod will go down out of the way, and then you can close your deck lid. Got the louvers for the back window are nice and straight and even. I think that's a lot better than the thin sheet metal ones that uh, don't look right even on a real car. They're really fragile on the real car.